Hello everyone, this is Sinan Ertemel, impresario of Balletistan. I am very delighted and, and honored to start our second season of Balletistan Wednesday Talk with a very special guest who needs no introduction. He is a world ballet star, one of the greatest dancers of our time, the true prince of ballet, one and only Vladimir Malakhov. Welcome to our podcast. Hello, hello. Thank you so much. This is a wonderful, wonderful invitation. And I'm looking forward to be with you and to talk and to discover some new things. <laughs> uh, my pleasure. So can we start from the beginning? So you were born in a very small city in central Ukraine, Krivirich. Can you tell us your upbringing? How did you start ballet? Oh, I started ballet. Actually, it was a dream of my mother because my mother tried everything in her life when she was young and rhythmic gymnastics and, uh, and character dance and ballroom dance. And, but ballet been, been her dream. And she said that the first child who will be born will be a ballet dancer. It was me. And of course, in my city, it was no... Uh, professional ballet studio and you know and I study in a um, small ballet studio with lots of girls and I only one boy was there and um, you know what you can do when in the age of four nothing so much you are doing around Christmas tree like a jumping rabbit or the teddy bear or fox or mouse yeah and the teacher said that the child is very talented, you know, I cannot give him anything more. I think you need to show him to the professional school. And my mother and the whole family, we decided that I need to go to the professional school. We sent three letters uh, for the audition for Vaganova Academy, for the Bolshoi Ballet Academy and the Kiev uh, Ballet School. And of course, they immediately come from Ukraine and Moscow. And maybe one week later, come from St. Petersburg. And of course, it was became, become a discussion where to go. Some half of the relatives said, we need to go to Kiev because it's closer to uh, our uh, um, place where I live. Other parts said, you know, you need to go to Moscow because it's, it was the capital of Soviet Union at that time. Okay, it was... Um, then I decide by myself that I need to go to... Moscow, because something different, you know, not Ukraine, but to study there. Of course, you know, uh, when I was coming to audition in the day what they give me, it was in this time, it was a, in this day, it was a 400, 400, more than 400 children. And of course, it was a three rounds. Yeah, first round, they check your body ability, the feet, the flexibility, the extension, jump. Second, it was, uh, will be uh, medical. And the third, you need to dance a small dance. Of course, I dance very funny piece. It's called Chunga Changa. Um, because, you know, I was not so much professional at that time. And uh, actually, they said, yes, we will take you. And I, I was very happy. And the 1st of September, my mother brought me to Moscow to, because I was staying in the dormitorium in internet at that time, because it's too far to go in and out. You know, I'm not from Moscow, some Moscow people or some other uh, children who was uh, related to somehow they can go for maybe for the, uh, some Saturday or Sunday for the weekend to see some friends or relatives. I was always stay in the dormitorium. Actually, it was mm -hmm. no problem because I have lots of things to think about, to see, to discover lots of interesting things. And um, when I was graduate from the school already, maybe this is already, I will tell later what happening <laughs> in the moment, because this is what my mother told me when I was graduate from the school and what happened after. Uh, right. Uh, uh, like I want to ask you a question about the 
uh, body for the ballet. Like I read about you that some of the uh, ballet artists describe you as having perfect proportions for the ballet. Can you I, elaborate on that? You know, of course, the God give me everything, but it's also, you know, God give you something, but also it's important how you use your body in uh, how to how to use your body for this profession. Of course, I have wonderful feet. I have uh, beautiful legs and uh, jump and flexibility. But of course, you need to know how to work. Uh, when I was already dancing, of course, many people was comparing me to beautiful legs like Margot, uh, like uh, Marlene Dietrich, and uh, you know I'm second Norif, and I'm dancing like Maria Callas singing, you know, but I would like to be Vladimir Malakov. I don't want to be second one. I want to be first one. And of course, when you need to control yourself, you need to know how to use your everything, what the God give it to you. And of course, when I start to jump, of course, I have such a big extension of the feet and I land uh, because I cannot control. I don't know how to do this. And you can see like this is in the pictures. Uh, you know, and I almost broke the feet because I didn't know how to touch, how to catch the floor. And thanks God, I have a wonderful teacher, Piotr Piastov, uh, with whom I was uh, studying for eight years. Actually, it was been, it was been first time in the history of uh, Bolshoi experimental class, how one student stay with one teacher for eight years. And actually, Thank you for my teacher that, you know, he has his own line to go and to give me everything what I need. Uh, that was in, he, indeed my next question, your teacher. Uh, he's considered maybe as probably the best male ballet teacher. Uh, can you tell us about the impact that he has on you? And he has like wonderful students like yourself. And Nikolai um, Siskarice, Alex Ratmansky, like how do you uh, get along uh, with uh, these people as like former students? You know, with Alex Ratmansky, I study, you know, he was my roommate. I know him from the age of 10. You know, we share the same room for eight years. We've been always, when we're going from the uh, class to class, becoming higher and higher, older and older. We've been always in the same room. Of course, he has been in not the same class. Only the last three uh, years, he was joined old Piesto class. But he, from the beginning, he was been in another class. But he actually very good friend of mine with whom, when he started his first choreography, mm. actually, we are being uh, beginners, like to study his ideas, what he, uh, bring actually later to the future to different company. Of course, first step when he did, we try <clears throat> all this uh, interesting part and ideas. We, uh, me, like uh, Natalia Redovskaya, principal dancer from Stanislavski, and Gennady Yanin, who is also was my roommate, uh, also a um, dancer before Stanislavski, then he's joined the Bolshoi. And of course, Nikolai Tiskariza, he is younger. He is younger than, than me. Of course, I know him later. Of course, I met him already when he was dancing in Bolshoi and we danced in many different galas. And uh, actually, it was been very interesting um, because Nikolai, it's a very special person for me. And we have lots of th comes together with him. We uh, talk a lot, you know, I, because he's now a director of the Vaganova Academy and always when I go there, I always visit him. We have lots of talk secretly things in the past and what coming in the future. Actually, it was very interesting. I'm thankful to him that he also a very good friend of mine. <clears throat> but the pesto have been very strict person, very strict, you know. He always, uh, everything, he was never happy, you know, and never happy. But I, 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 actually, it's good because uh, when, when I was dancing already in professional company, <coughs> I was uh, also never happy with myself. 
always I ask teacher when they come in the end of the performance, I ask them what has been bad, that I need to work on something. I never ask what has been good. I know what has been good, but it's very important that uh, we need to learn how to hear also negative things, not only how wonderful, how beautiful, how perfect, you know. That's why if you hear all only how wonderful and beautiful you are, then you will not grow. It's an artist. It's a person. You know, it's very important also to, to hear negative things. You know, that's why I teach my students to hear also the bad things. It can, you know, next day, normally you're not allowed to do this. Yeah. After the performance come and say, you know, this is what's been bad. But actually, because they're still in the clouds, they still uh, so wonderful, and uh, you know they bring the, take the applause after the performance and the flowers. But suddenly Malakov comes and say, you know, this has been not so good. This has not been very bad, you know. And of course, some people been upset. But next day, when they come back from the clouds, they realize that you know I don't want to give something negative and bad. I just that they must hear they open the ears and hear the things what is most important things in in their career and it's helped actually a lot of dancers i, I see life of lots of uh, wonderful uh, people that they learn how to listen also the negative that's why you know uh our my teacher he also say bad things yeah beside this we learn also not to be like a, only dancers <clears throat> Mm -hmm. We learn also, uh, he teach us to listen to the opera, to uh, see the paintings, we went to the museum, we went to the different exhibition, we know the mythology, you know, he teach us also other things, not only ballet, yeah, we need, mm -hmm. we need to go a little bit to the right, you need to go to the left, you know, because this is also inspiration to your profession, you can bring the all the sculpture things or paintings or music or opera singers you know everything it's come together this is all art and it's why it's very right. very important that you not concentrate on the dance 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 beside art art it's a big structure you know and the art it exists lots of different things also furniture also the uh, jewelry also uh, the crystal you know um, furniture it's mm -hmm. also art you know but if you know how to uh, discover yourself you know uh, then you will grow it's also a person it's a dancer what is help you for your profession mm -hmm. uh, my professor he's an economist but i remember him like saying to me that i don't consider you as a student i consider you as a future teacher Right. Yes. I think that's kind of the philosophy that maybe he instilled like on you because when you are doing your reconstructions and like choreographies, I think you have to go back to other parts of the art, uh, such as music. It's like uh, antique, you know, it's also when you reconstruct some ballet, you go more deeper inside, you, you try to research. It's like also archaeology. Yeah, when the people discover lo the lost city or lost, uh, you know, different things, treasure, it's exactly the same. They discover the, you know, still the Egyptian the, uh, um, people discover, still now discover lots of tomb from the pharaohs and lots of different jewels and everything. Exactly the same as the artist. We, we search, we search for different things to make the art even better. That's why when I when I start to do some new ballet, like for example La Perie, I search for lots of things because this ballet didn't exist. It exists just lithographies, yeah, picture. You know, I I, I discover the score and the music, but choreography is lost. Of course, I open the libretto, book libretto. I read. You know, I try to reconstruct the visually how I see this wonderful, interesting ballet. Right. Uh, can we go back to the beginning of your uh, career at yes. Moscow Classical Ballet? Yeah. You became the youngest principal dancer. Uh, can you tell us about your time there? What roles did you dance, your teachers? 
my teacher was uh, i have one actually uh, wonderful uh, teachers i have uh, um azari plisetsky my teacher who was the brother of maya plisetska and mm -hmm. also azari meserer who was the cousin actually the whole fam family of uh, azari meserer asaf meserer was a very famous ballet teacher from bolshoi you know and also um Natalia Taborka, with whom I was working, also was a ballerina in Bolshoi. This is, was my teachers with whom I was working in Moscow Classical Ballet. But thank you very much to Natalia Kasatkin and Vladimir Vasilov. They took me immediately to the, to the position of the principal dancer. But of course, because the company in that time it was not very big, of course, all the principals, if they like uh, group scene, we must do group scene because it was not enough people. For example, creation in the world, when it's Adam and Eve give the birth of lots of children, yeah, we need to do all this as the people. Yeah, or for example, a beautiful, interesting uh, ballet, Gayane, what is also, in the end, it's like a um, celebration and we did, we actually sit under the table and all the principal dancer who was not been in, in the this performance, we did the, uh, Corps de Ballet Sing, yeah, but small, yeah, just uh, entourage, we can say, not uh, jumping or doing anything. And, um, you know, Natalia Kasat can create for me, Vladimir Vasilov, lots of interesting things like uh, um, Poem of Stars, yeah, when I did the uh, main, and also the Mozart and the Leda and the Swan, and um, I did all the principal roles, like from Giselle, from uh, Swan Lake, and, uh, uh, Magical, uh, Magical Comes All, and of course, Adam and Creation of the World. But it was been very interesting and um, wonderful work. But you know, I need something more. That's why I decide to try new advantage. That's why I decide to go to the West. This is already will yeah. be now. next chapter, I think. Yeah, yeah uh, definitely. Before that, uh, being in Moscow, as far as I remember, you were also considered for Bolshoi, right? But you kind of rejected that, right? Uh, Do you want to tell us? It's uh, not. This? It's not rejected. Actually, didn't take me to after the school. I didn't take me to the Bolshoi, and. Um, the Moscow Classical Ballet took me immediately to, this is the second company, I've also Stanislavski in that time. Um, they said because I didn't have a, a, perm, like a permission. Work permit. Take, yeah, and, but Moscow Classical Ballet people, they did. But mm -hmm. then I was uh, in, this is in 86, and uh, oh, sorry, 86, 80, 86, yeah. 86 i or win one uh, grand prix in varna international ballet competition and in 88 i take it's a national ballet competition and have a gold medal and then they said maybe in the future you will have possibility to uh, go to the bolshoi but we will still wait in, in 89 i win the gold medal in international ballet competition and now they said, now it's time, you can come. But they said, sorry, the train too late. Going. Yeah, too late. <laughs> I would like to stay with this company. Thank you very much. But of course, I was dancing in Bolshoi. I was being invited by Vladimir Vasilev to his jubileum. And uh, I was been many times there. That's why I have a wonderful relationship to Bolshoi, but I never dance there. It's a permanent uh, member of the company. Uh, you become maybe, maybe God said to me, Vladimir. No, I think it's good. He saved me from the company. Maybe he said, you know, everything is written up there. We cannot mm -hmm. uh, say how it's supposed to be. I'm sure you have a line already written when you burn and when you die, and what it will be with you during you when you live in in the, in this world, and how you need to do. Of course. Everything, it's, uh, you go, somebody manipulate you, you know, or the yeah. feeling, 
or the thoughts, or maybe it's you know by heart how to do this. That's why it's, um, I think it's also um, your sec, your uh, third eye who, who mm -hmm. opened the door and see what is will happening. Uh, I completely agree with you. I mean, I think you have a very special journey from East and the West and like merging two cultures together. So everything happened for a reason. And I think you becoming an emerging artist, late 80s, early 90s, that's the time when the uh, iron curtain is falling as well. I think compared to earlier uh, great legends, you had maybe a more easier path like to the West. And, you, and can you tell us about your transition the tour in the USA, then Vienna, and so on. And this, and that time, actually, it's already that the um, Iron Quadrant already was very soft. We can say like this: you can go out, and it's happening in 1991, I think. 90, 1991, December. I was uh, dancing in Los Angeles classical ballet, Nutcracker, because this is, was my second appearance. The first time I did uh, a mid, uh, Midsummer Night Dream, and second time they invite me to do Nutcracker there. And uh, I come and, you know, like before Christmas, December, it's every company is doing Nutcracker, even the some ballet studios, small ballet studios, uh, ballet school, they do not crack, not crack, not crack. It doesn't matter how many you will do, all the performances will be sold out. And of course, I did maybe, I think, 30 or 36, not crack, no, 30, I, I don't remember. But actually, it's not, I did only the, the, the small things in the fight with the uh, King Mouse, and then in the end, it's just Grandpa. And it was actually it was not so hard, but you know the performance every day. Sometimes it's double performances. And one night I was staying in such a wonderful uh, house, and I have such a wonderful friends, American family. I can, I can say I stay there in Laguna Beach. And beautiful place. Beautiful place. Yeah, beautiful view to the ocean. Yeah, and uh, I wake up during the night, sweating, and I thought to myself. If I will go back, maybe my life will be exactly the same. Why I cannot try to work a little bit in the West? And I went to this family where I stayed, Janet and Henry Eggers, and they have wonderful daughter also, Alison, who was also studying ballet, but then she chose to be a mother and with, uh, she chose the family. And I wake her up and I said, um, Janet, what do you think if I will not go back? And she said, you know, I cannot decide anything uh, because uh, this is your life. And I think it's better you can ask your family, your mother. And I said, can I call? I call my mother, you know, in that time it was very expensive to call international call. Uh, and I said to my mother, what do you think if I will not come back? And she said, do it. What is better for your career? This is my mother said. And I said, OK, I will not come back. Of course, we, with one suitcase, without anything, and in Moscow already I had an apartment, and I just furnished this apartment, and it was my, uh, it was in that time to have apartment in Moscow, you know, it was a, a wonderful uh, thought, things. And I, I left everything there, and with one suitcase, with Russian passport, uh, with, uh, no experience to be in the West without any languages. I, I said, okay. But thanks God, I have a guest performance in Germany, in Stuttgart. The Marcia Heide, former artistic director of Stuttgart Ballet, she invited me to do the three performances of Sleeping Beauty. Of course, with Janet, we tried to organize this as the visa and working permission. At that time, it was even much difficult and harder to go to Germany. Finally, we get this uh, visa. Of course, I come and I lost one performance because you know you need to wait longer and uh, waiting, wait for the working permission. Of course, I lost uh, one performance, but two performances I danced. I come 
and uh, I did two performances and then I was without job. Yeah. But thanks God, I also stayed uh, in the family, also the uh, ex-director uh, Alex Ursulak with his wonderful wife Crystal Ursulak. She was uh, also a former ballerina um, from Vienna Staatsoper and also in Stuttgart Ballet. Um, I stay in the family, you know, I can go and take class in school. And of course, I study uh, languages. And of course, I also, at that time, helping um, John Corbale School for some performances. And actually, I'm very thankful to this wonderful family that um, they take me and they give me uh, the support and love. And you know, sometimes I need to stay home because I want to go out, you know, I want to see different things, you know, this is my first time to be in the West. And they said, no, you learn language, you do this, and then you go out. And of, I said, of course, I was sitting and learning English, I learned German a little bit, yeah. And then I was helping also school to, uh, to do some different performances. I think that first time I uh, did choreography of... Uh, um, William Forsyth, I did love songs, what is made for school. Then it was been uh, Alex Ursulak organized wonderful performance. It's called uh, Niz Memory of Nizhinsky, Nizhinsky Evening, where I dance Spectre de la Rose, I dance Le uh, Les Feed, and I did also Narcis, Narcis from Kasian Galizowski, what has been given to me by Vladimir Vasilyev. And I dance this is in Moscow and also in the international ballet competition in 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 russia and uh, it was been wonderful you know i wasn't even in the stage of stuttgart ballet but in the small house they have a big house and they have a small house of course in a small house but you know i was been very happy then i was without a job uh, doing class and learning languages then suddenly they have a telephone call from vienna Staatsoper, and um, at that time was Elena Chernyshova, also former uh, uh, mistress from American Ballet Theater. When uh, uh, Mikhail Baryshnikov was became artistic director, he took her as a mistress to be a teacher in American Ballet Theater. Then when she left, she, she get a job in to be artistic director at uh, Vienna Staatsoper. And of course, uh, they called me and uh, Yuri Vider, her assistant, he called me and he said uh, that uh, if I would like to come mm, to do Romeo and Juliet, I said, sure, of course, you know, I'm without a job. Of course, I would like to come. And I study this ballet in Stuttgart. <clears throat> I learned everything. I took the ballerina from Stuttgart ballet because the all the duet, beautiful, but very heavy. I took ballerina from Stuttgart Ballet, I lived her, of course, at that time I didn't have so much experience. Of course I have experience to lift and to partner, but it's different, uh, a different technique a little bit. It's neoclassic, it's not the classical ballet so much. Mm -hmm. Then when I come to Vienna Staatsoper, you know, uh, I already been prepared. I know every entrance, of course, I didn't know the fights, you know, because I didn't have uh, anybody. And um, um, it was a, I did the performance and it was a big success and they immediately offered me a contract of the, to be a principal dancer of Vienna Staatsoper. This is how my career started in the West already. Uh, it's a person who is not dancing at all. Uh, I read it somewhere that you dance 24 different variations of Swan Lake. Like different, how is that possible? Uh, 24 different productions of Swan Lake. Yes, yeah. Of course, so, when they invite you to different company, to different countries, of course, you learn uh, different the choreography. You know, it's like just in American Ballet Theater, I did two different versions of uh, Swan Lake. One it's, uh, was old production of uh, uh, Baryshnikov time, and then uh, our new artistic director, Kevin McKenzie, he did his own version. This is already two, yeah? When I was dancing in the Moscow Classical Ballet, I did uh, old Moscow in the, the version. 
Then when I was in Japan, I did uh, also many different uh, versions. Yeah, I did when I was working in Canada. There's Eric Brun version. When I was dancing in Vienna, that Rudolf Nureyev uh, uh, versions. Yeah. They, and then when I was in Stuttgart, that's John Kranko version. So I did that. But of course, when you go to different uh, countries and yeah, you then I count and then I I count the twenty four different versions of one like I did during <laughs> and twenty fifth that's amazing and twenty fifth production I did uh, my own choreography and the premiere was been um, four years ago in Zagreb in Zagreb in in Croatia. That was uh, also uh, one of my colleague, very good friend with whom I was working here. He actually he was my student, yeah? and then he became uh, artistic director Leonard Yakovina. Actually, if you see the uh, video of Caravaggio, that's a duet from the second act. The two men. This is, was him, and uh, we uh, work. Together, I did the first production of Swan Lake, and then second time he invited me to do the new production of Nutcracker, also my version. Oh, by the way, like we receive many comments throughout the world, they love your Caravaggio. Uh, oh. And uh, uh, so, like from like Vienna, you I think you went back to North America, ABT and National <coughs> Ballet of Canada. Can you yeah. also? Tell us about your time there. Um, I was working from 92. Yeah, in 92, I, I get the uh, contract of the principal dancer in Vienna Staatsoper. In 94, uh, I get the present from the president of Austria. Um, uh, I get the Austrian nationality. Yeah, I get Austrian passport. Actually, at that time, you know, I, you cannot get two. You cannot get Russian or Austrian. That's why I choose Austrian. But one problem, it's solved. I can go in any country without a visa. But second problem start, army. Hmm. You know, for, because I was not this age, you know, where I cannot escape. They always <laughs> send me the letter. And sometimes they send me the letter before the performance. And it was horrible. You know, I need to concentrate for beautiful motivation, you know, for the art and suddenly get the letter. But the next morning at six o'clock in the morning, you need to go to the army and the check. And everything. Of course, I have lots of friends who will support me, who is protecting me. Of course, I I go there after the performance. Uh, after the performance, you go with your friends a little bit to eat in the restaurant and talk and uh, have a little bit fun. And at six o'clock in the morning, you go there. And of course, this is important people who try to protect me and save me from the army. Of course, I, I, I didn't go there, but I need to go to the military just to check. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. there. Of course, I, I didn't go there. Then in 94, I get this uh, Austrian uh, nationality. And in 94, also, I went to the States to uh, try maybe to to work uh, uh, some in a big company. And, um, you know, I did audition in the National Level of Canada. At that time, it was a, uh, Reed Anderson, who was uh, been artistic director of National Level of Canada. And then he was the uh, former uh, director of Stuttgart Ballet. He moved from Canada. And then when I was in Canada, he took me also to be with him in Stuttgart, yeah. But I also did audition for American Ballet Theater '94, and Jane Herman was looking. I come to do audition, and um, she looked at me and she said, "Oh, please uh, come. I like you very much. Please come next day." Of course, when I come next day, she doesn't remember me, and she said, "Oh, I don't know who you are," and like this. But actually, I worked from 94 already in Canada. But in 95, uh, the administration changed, you know, all everybody. And Kevin McKenzie joined its artistic director and he invited me to American Ballet Theatre. Actually, I was already been in Canada and uh, in, um, in, uh, in ABT. But 
Um, in uh, Vienna, what happened in Vienna also, uh, when they, you know, like this is typical the Viennese mentality of the people. You know, when they discover something new, they will bring. Then they, of course, they're looking for some somebody else new. Yeah. And of course, there's another dancer came, Tamash Sulimoshi, wonderful uh, dancer who is now its artistic director in uh, Budapest National Opera House. And uh, he comes uh, there after me. And then this time they did the uh, premiere of Manon by Kenneth Macmillan. And I did De Griot and Tamash did Lesco. And this is role, it's like you shoot in center, you know, in the tent. And it's perfectly fit him. And it was, he was superb, superb. And then, you know, they just said, oh, we don't need Malakov. We have a new star, Tamas Solimotion. I said, sure. And then I was uh, said, okay, then I will leave because I have another. And, um, but of course, uh, I was very happy because I danced in Canada. I was working in ABT. And then immediately, a couple of months uh, or maybe five, six months later, they called me and said, oh, Vladimir, can you please help? We need your help. I said, yeah, but you, you said you don't need me. No, 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 we need you. Please, 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 please. And, I, and then I already said my condition. You know, I go, I will be a guest I, because I have a, a ABT and the National of Canada. I can go for some performances, but I cannot be permanent. No, 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 everything is okay. That's why, you know, I have two permanent company and I have a guest performance, a guest uh, artist in, in Vienna Staatsoper. Then I, um, I, after working in Canon ABT, um, Reed Anderson get a position or to be artistic director in Stuttgart Ballet. And he offered me if I will go with him. Of course, I said, sure, of course I will go. I went with uh, Reed Anderson to Stuttgart Ballet. It's mean I was working in four companies and <laughs> guest in Vienna Staatsoper, permanently ABT, permanently in Stuttgart, and some performances. Then after one year, I already quit uh, National Bill of Canada and I just uh, work in this is a three company. Of course, it was been very difficult, you know, to go from the plane to plane, from this is four company plus to have some other guest performances like in Japan or Italy or France or everywhere. It's also been, you know, I was, and for a couple of years, years and years and years, I didn't have vacation, you know. And everybody said, Vladimir, if you will continue like this, your body will collapse. Then I said, okay, I will try to get vacation. And after eight years not to have vacation, I decided to have a rest. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I didn't realize that, you know, when you do vacation, you relax so much, then after it's very difficult to go back to the same shape like you've been before. You know, every losing day, you need to have it two days to be exactly the same shape before. That's why I hate vacation. You know, I, after I did, like, during the whole year when I was working, maybe three days, maybe two days, maybe four days, maybe five days in different time. Yeah. Then it's, uh, it's not so big shock for your body, but you know, I was uh, doing like uh, everybody four weeks vacation, but four weeks vacation, it's one month. And then you need to have extra months to be exactly the same shape before I was shocked actually. Then I said, never ever again, I will follow the rules like to have vacation like full vacation, like if it will be, if I will be not a dancer, no problem. Yeah. But because I always move, your body need to be constantly moving, 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 because it's becoming like a old mm -hmm. pitch, you know, because, yeah, without energy, yeah. without anything, even you swim and you, even you stretch, but it's not the same, you know, also you lose the uh, thoughts, uh, you know, more time you go on stage, more free you are and if you're not for example when i have an injury yeah and i didn't go on stage i have a cross leg i didn't go on stage for six months of course when i come to 
the first time on stage, I was afraid because everything like a new for me. But actually, step by step, performance after the performance, all this is nervosity and everything is go out. And then you feel more interesting and more comfortable on stage. But going back to the my up and down roller coaster from the country to the country, from the company to the company. Then I was uh, working uh, in, beside this, of course, I went to the and ball dancing, ball showing, and dancing Mariinsky, and in Japan, the, but still continue to dance. And this is the four companies, three companies, four companies, then it's three companies, then it's three companies still continue. Uh, Vienna, uh, Dudgarten, ABT, Slowly, Vienna also went out. Yeah. Then Stuttgart also slowly. When I get the position to be artistic director of uh, Berlin in 2002, then I last just keep ABT and I left Stuttgart. And uh, from so 2002, I became artistic director in Berlin in the. Uh, uh, Staatsoper unter der Linden. This is the direct. Uh, uh, let's like come to that a little bit later. So sure. Berlin will be uh, kind of uh, one important uh, chapter. Uh, before that, like you dance in Bolshoi and Marinsky and major companies like throughout the world, like North America, Europe, and you even have visited Cuba for another like dance project. Can you briefly compare different cultures, uh, attitudes like towards ballet in terms of classical, contemporary, modern, and the reception that you uh, received in these countries? You know, because I have, I'm concentrated on myself, my line. Of course, you can see what is going on in different, of course, there's a different school. A different uh, mentality, you know. You cannot compare the Paris Ballet School with the Bolshoi. You cannot compare Vaganova Academy of, with uh, Hamburg Ballet School. You, you cannot compare uh, uh, American Ballet Theater, New York City Ballet, with Cuban. You know, they all different. You know, there's a pluses and minuses in this. You know, um, also for the style, also for the quality um, for also for everything but to see how the people work and the challenge what they have this is the interesting things you know uh, you, you know every every country every company every school they have pluses and minuses and also the company they have a pluses and minuses that's why it when I'm joining Berlin you know I know what I need to do and what I cannot do, you know. I saw how which uh, good things uh, the people did in the directors and what mistakes they made, you know. And this is actually, you you put this is in your brain here. Ah, okay, I know if I in the future, but I didn't know if I will be artistic director of ballet company. But I thought hmm, in the future, maybe I will put in the thoughts, this is maybe, this is the point will help me. Uh, it will be a nice, good things like motivation or inspiration or even the things uh, to do. Uh, but I cannot compare. All the uh, company, all the school have, uh, like I said, pluses and minuses. That's why if you can, you can like or you doesn't like. This is the mind. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh in your career, you have danced with extraordinary uh, artists, ballerinas, such as uh, Julia Kent, right, in uh, ABT, and uh, Diana Vishnova, right, yeah. uh, and uh, Nadia Asaidokova, uh, with whom you had the best connection, like Ooh. the best partnership. You know, uh, I actually, uh... I have with everybody, you know, the all difference, you know, uh, I love them all. Of course, Diana, uh, with whom I was dancing, she was the, uh, my muse, um, 
constantly in every different production. And Julie Ken, with whom I spent most of the time and uh, in my career. And Nadia Saidakova, who was been uh, from Moscow Classical Ballet, even the Kasatkin and Vasilyov, they asked me if uh, I, we can take her to the company. They asked opinion about, and of, of course I said, you know, she has the potential and I'm sure uh, we can work with her and we can do lots of interesting things. But beside this is that it's also like a star, you know, international, you know, that's also Viviana, Julie Kent and Nadia Saidakova, they've been the closest to my career with whom I was dance most of the performances, yeah. In, the, in, the, in during my career. Of course, there's also been a wonderful Japanese ballerina, Mika Yoshioka, with whom I was dancing always, 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 always. Yeah. There's also uh, been uh, Susan Jaffe and Amanda Makero and Irina Dvaravenka from ABT. You know, also in Berlin, there's also Eliza Cabrera and Paulina Simeona, of course, and mm -hmm. uh, Emma Salenko. And um, when I was working uh, guest in La Scala, uh, also uh, um, Alessandra Ferry, with whom I was working also in American Ballet Theater and done different performances. But um, who else? Svetlana Zakharova. Yeah, sorry. Of course, of course. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Svetlana Zakharova and Svetlana Lunkina, I can say also, who is now the principal dancer National Ballet of Canada. Um, this is the, my partners with whom I... Of course, I was dancing also with the stars, I can say, stars, stars, like uh, Alicia Alonso, I did Spectre de la Rose, and Carla Fracci, I did also, and Marcia Heide, with uh, everybody, you know, this is... If you will have it, for example, you go to how to be, uh, for example, this is the program, how to be a millionaire, and if it will be the question, who was the last partner from Alicia Alonso, Carla Fracci, and Marcia Heide? <laughs> say it's Vladimir Malakov. But of course, I was dancing also with uh, Munich Ludier, with the Etoile from Paris Opera, Elisabeth Morin, Carol Arbo, also this is, uh, and Claude de Vimpion, also, yeah, this has also been the, a wonderful experience for me. Uh, that's an excerpt from uh, Manon. Uh, in my humble opinion, with Vishnova, you you had the best chemistry. Oh, you know, I, it, first of all, I, if, you know, when we dance together, we don't need to say anything. You know, even from the ah, little bit move of the eye or head, she knows what I will do. And also, uh, of course, we rehearse. The, the first time I met Diana when I come to the Marinsky Festival. And uh, I have a uh, possibility with, to dance Giselle with her. And when we met in the studio, first what she said, she said to me, I would like to be changed completely. I would like to have a different uh, Giselle. I would like to be a different. Change me completely. And of course, we start to work because I have at that time different experience to, to partner different partners and uh, different. Uh, oh, ah, yeah, sorry, I forgot another Vienna Stadt's Oper, Brigitte Stadler, who was of the course. partner from uh, Rudolf Nuriyev. He took her from Corps de Ballet and he made her principal dancer. Of course, Eva Peters and Simona Noja and everybody. Also, I forgot Lucia Lacara. This is also, you know, everything comes, uh, all my partners with whom I was working and whom I was dancing. Yeah, going back to Diana and Lucia, exactly the same. You know, I dance with Lucia and Romeo and Juliet and Grandpa Classic and then White Swan and actually Sleeping Beauty in Stuttgart with Marcy Heide it was there. You know, all the ballet world, it's like a spider net. You, you, some, you lose and then somehow up, you meet again like this. And the first time I saw Lucia in the Spoleto Festival there, yeah. she been introduced by Vittorio Tolenghi, very famous Italian critic. And I, that, that, then I saw, of course, now I remember again, um, Altinai Asil Muratova, 
also the oh. from uh, Mariinsky and the ex uh, uh, director of Vaganova and now she's a ballet director in Astra. You know, all the time, oh. Viana Durante also, I danced also with Viana. Um, you know, I have such a many, many, many partners whom I was uh, young. Uh, so, uh, when you look from the other side, like what do the partners like think about you? Like as a dancer, what do you think you made the greatest impact and distinguish yourself from the rest of the artists? What is the most special about Malaho? Boy, <laughs> I don't know actually, you know, um, what is special about me? First of all, I'm, first of all, I'm a normal person, you know, and uh, I like to make everybody happy, the people and my partner. That's why I always uh, try to take care of my partner with whom I was dancing. And this is a very funny story because Diana was in, during my career always in Berlin and everywhere with us, uh, and in Mariinsky, and in Japan. And of course, uh, I try to protect her, you know, when you partner, you know, I put all the work for myself to make her happy. Of course, when you come, when she's coming back to St. Petersburg, to the Marinsky, of course, uh, immediately when she has a, um, she has a rehearsal with somebody else, immediately partners feel that, you know, uh, that it's different. That's why all the partners are, oh, You've been again in Berlin, you've been again by Malakov. Now you need to stay in your own legs, you know. That's why, you know, it's different technique. I try to always, you know, it's a, for, for me, it's the most important thing that I do all the work, you know. But some people think, oh, you know, because we need to save energy. We need to save energy uh, for our variation or for the coda. But, you know, I never thought about this, you know, if you will, actually, you will have energy, you, you, you will have second condition, you know, you don't need to think, oh, if I will not partner like this, I, my legs will be, no, it's everything is wrong, you know, everything is only in, in the head of the people like this. Mm -hmm. uh, that's more about your uh, nature. I also ask about um, artistic talent. Uh, people say that everybody can jump, uh, a jump, but nobody can land like Malaho. You have the most quietest jump. Like, can you tell us about that? How did you achieve that quality? Actually, it's come from my teacher, from the best of uh, Piotr Antonovich. Yeah, he learn, uh, he teach us, and then uh, we learn how to do. He always said, you need to think like a cat jump like without silence when they jump you can see like uh, the wild, wild animals when they go there you know that's why the predators always hunt and exactly the same by jump you know if you land it must be without silence that nobody can hear anything of course it's difficult you need to learn you need to have this is a special technique everybody thought that i have something inside of my feet you know <laughs> that it's like a market or uh, you know like suspended and then you land and it's pff, no it, nothing it's just, <laughs> just, uh, like this i learned how to hard work hard work yeah and it, it doesn't need to be you, need, you don't need to put weight you don't need to put extra you know to make your calf like this you need to just learn how to catch like a cat and this is the thought about this is I thought all the time, you know, walk like a cat, jump like a cat. That's why it's, this is my, this is my goal. This is my plus. Yeah, it's like a Kung Fu. You are imitating one animal in this case, like a cat. Yeah, a cat style. Uh, so uh, let's come to like Berlin. Uh, you you became principal dancer at a, at a very young age and you became also artistic director at extremely young age. And I think it was a big challenge because you uh, combined like three different uh, 
uh, ballet theaters in Berlin. And you were also a dancer plus an artistic director. Can you like tell us about the transition, your experience in Berlin? Oh, actually, uh, it's was I was been invited by Daniele Barenboim, who was joined the Staatskapelle to be at uh, music director and to be a uh, music director of the uh, Staatsoper Unter Linden. He invited me. Uh, also, he talked. We met in Vienna, and we talk about. And I said, I'm very interested. Interesting to uh, join Berlin, uh, but actually, I have already experience in Berlin before. I come here to dance and to work with him. The first time I was being invited in '96 to come to do a uh, program Ballet Russe when I did Spectre de la, de la Rose and, and Le Silphid. And second time, I was being invited to do Sleeping Beauty. Uh, choreographed by Rudolf Nuri. Then the third time I was being invited to be to dance Swan Lake, Premier B, yeah, uh, by Patrice Bart choreography. Uh, the uh, 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 cast A, it was uh, um, a dancer from uh, from uh, Berlin, from Germany. And then cast B, it's international. It was me, then uh, Mother Queen, it was Munich Lutier, and the swan was Elizabeth Murray. And uh, the fourth time, I was being invited to do the premiere, already main cast, with uh, Daniel Barenboim conducting when I was dancing with N N Nadia Saidakova, premiere of Nutcracker. Yeah. You can see this is I see the video also exists of this nutcracker, and then this is, was a 2000, and then in 2002, already I was being invited to be artistic director, and uh, to be artistic director in 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 the Staatsoper um, Unter der Linden. Of course, mm -hmm. when I come, it was a, a company. I need to do audition. I invite uh, dancers, and uh, I need to. Clean lots of uh, you know lots of bureaucracy, lots of uh, things, and of course I want to take care of everything. Then I said no. I think I need to concentrate only for the artistic way. I want to make a, this company good. I want to bring this company to the international level, and I want that comp that people know what the Stats Ballet and the company can travel a little bit. And of course, the, my first premiere of the season, it was uh, Bayadere. Yeah, this is choreography, what I did uh, in Vienna Staatsoper. Mm -hmm. And I invite Diana Vishnova to be in Nikia, and it was a big success, and it was wonderful. And in 2002, the German government decided to bring the three opera houses together, ballet company, three, and yeah, Arga, two, because also to save money, and that will be one company who will serve three opera houses. And uh, of course, it's for the, all the people, it was not good, this idea, because, you know, ballet bring lots of money, and, you know, and, you know, ballet also didn't get so much money, but ballet it was more popular, you know, and more successful, and uh, and that time, you know, the, all the money is going for, for one in one pot. And, you know, like this, they thought if uh, a ballet will be separate, they have their own budget. Actually, this is, was good things because we can do the different new different production. We can invite different choreographers and we can do lots of interesting work. Yeah. And 2002, they put three companies together. What has been named Stats Ballet Berlin. Of course, this was lots of work for me, for me to be a dancer, to be a choreographer, and to be intendant, not already director, to be intendant of this is in one company. That was a... Um, because Staatsoper is still good, but the Deutsche Oper, the, also uh, opera in the West, when we went there with the wonderful uh, choreographers, uh, 
uh, I did David Parsons, I did uh, Leo Mucic did new choreography, and I did Symphony in C by Ergi Kilian, and of course, that's no public, you know, I was in shock. Then I thought how to bring the public, how to make, the, the, to bring the public uh, the, the more interesting ballet. Then I decided to organize this the program called Malakov and Friends, yeah? And I tried to invite different uh, stars to be a part of, uh, of me and the different program. Of course, I invite Lucia Lacar, I invite Aurélie Dupont, uh, Manuel Legri, uh, uh, Vladimir Shklerov, Evgenia Abrasova, uh, Julie Kent, everybody, all my friends whom, yeah? Uh, Jose mm -hmm. Carey also, uh, uh, Mika Yoshioka, Mizuka Uena, all the partners with whom I was dancing, I invite them and they dance and Matthew Golding and everybody. Yeah. Of course, during this year, I did, I think, five or six Malako and Friends. Of course, it's interest to become, of course, it's also, uh, I invite some different choreographer who did exclusive work just for Stats Ballet, for example, like a Caravaggio. Yeah. Or Itzy Galili did a special piece, uh, yeah. And then, of course, the William we did uh, William Forsyth. We have big, big repertoire. Patrice Bard did uh, uh, also uh, Percy Shelley and another choreography. Then the Pierre Jocard did the, this is cooperation with uh, Snow White, the beautiful costume by Jean Paul Gaultier. This is also. And uh, we have a big, uh, very interesting. Uh, then I did Sleeping Beauty, and then I did Cinderella, then another choreographer I did a, a different ballet. And of course, and this time becoming better and better and better. Also, when the Staatsoper was closed for innovation, we move to the Deutsche Oper. <clears throat> and of course, we have now more possibility. We have a three beautiful ballet studio. We have a beautiful, uh, uh space we can do lots of uh, rehearsal you know not to be in such a small studios and we have more space there and of course i've been of course i forgot the most important things what we can do only with the big company uh, yeah this is the ring from the ring from maris bijar you know when starts ballet in 2004 became 2004 starts ballet berlin Immediately, I invite Maurice Bijar to do this uh, wonderful ballet. It's called Ring from the Ring. Yeah, from it was actually its last five hours. It's all the uh, ring in uh, one ballet with beautiful uh, wow. Elizabeth Cooper and Mikhail Dinar, who was also there. Uh, I did Logia and all the dancers, all the dancer was there, all the, even Diana Vishneva, she did first uh, Frika and then, of course, for the next uh, premiere, she did Brunhilda. And, <clears throat> and uh, it, here, yeah. like, you play uh, one of the stepsisters, right, in the Cinderella? In Cinderella, I play sisters, yeah, of course I play sisters, uh, because I said that, uh, oh, Actually, when I was in dancing in Moscow classical ballet, also Natalia Kasatkin and Vladimir Vasilion, they enlarge a little bit part of Gamash. Yeah, Gamash, that's why I was jumping. I was doing lots of different funny things. And it was uh, interesting for me to be also a comical and comical part. Yeah. Uh, that's why uh, 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 this is me. Yeah, this is me, fat ballerina. Yeah, who <laughs> is uh, uh, always uh, thinks that she is the best. You know, actually, it's come from the real life. You know, if you go to the um, life, sometimes you can see exactly the same uh, same situation in your life. This is the sort of parallel life of the companies and. The, Maybe I try to take something uh, very, um, you know, picky, picky things. What is mm -hmm. happening and everywhere? Uh, can, can you uh, tell us about how you uh, nurtured like the artists? Like you brought like very big names to Berlin, like uh, Palina Simonova, Yana Salenko, as an artistic director. 
Uh, can you, you tell know, us about your experience? Paulina Simeonova, you know, I was in Bolshoi Academy with the ex-director uh, Sofia Golovkina, and I actually was in the class. Yeah, and then I saw the Paulina. I didn't know it was a co-accident. I come, I come in her birthday. It was happening, you know, 13th of September. It's easy to remember. And then uh, uh, I was there and I was watching the class. And then they said, oh, today it's Paulina Simona. And of course, at that time, I have this the wonderful uh, line clothes, Malako by Chakot, what they, they produce, this is the warm wear. And I give her a present because I didn't, I just brought. <laughs> and I give it to her, it's a present. Yeah, and then I asked her if she would like to join uh, Stats Ballet. Uh, and no, not that time, in 2002, it was uh, Stats Oper Unter der Linden. And then after it's become the Stats Ballet. And of course, she said she will think, and then actually she give uh, yes. And I, actually, I was very happy because I'm sure they offer for and Bolshoi and they offer her and uh, uh, Marinsky, but she chose to come and uh, to work with me uh, uh, in Berlin. And, uh, you know, I would like to that she's already the first performance uh, doing some principal roles, but actually it was not possible. The first performance was actually before birth, before her before her birthday, and actually in this time in two thousand two, uh, she was just become eighteen. And by German law, when she is not eighteen, <coughs> she can work in the company, but she is not allowed to perform. That's mm -hmm. why the first performance she was in tears that she cannot be in stage. And I said, don't worry, you will have lots of performances. Don't worry, you will dance all these roles. No, I want to be in stage. Like typical, the young children who would like to, to work. Right. And of course, after, you know, she did all the roles. We did lots of uh, uh, roles with her. I did and Sleeping Beauty and I did also uh, Swan Lake and also uh, uh, Lots of different things, you know, and also this is Serat Amor from Maurice Bejar. Um, also, this is the beautiful uh, music of uh, Richard Strauss. Yeah, that's why, uh, yeah, Jana Salenka just come, you know, uh, she has uh, this interesting. Uh, I sent one of my dancer, Marian Walter, to the competition to Austria. And of course, Jana was there too. And then they have this team <coughs> together and they become partner. Of course, they cannot live without each other. And at that time, uh, you know, Jana came to Berlin, and but I didn't have space, places. And I, I said, sure, Jana, of course I will take you. But, you know, slowly, step by step, you know, I just doesn't have a contract. She said, no, no problem. And then slowly, slowly, I bring her to the I exactly but she was being already prima ballerina but you know because the love make some things happening together you know <laughs> that's why right. uh, um, of course I said sure 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 I don't want to ruin your uh, wonderful uh, love uh, relationship of course I will do everything possible to make you happy yeah like this and right. Jan, you know what just being a partner during, you know, I said, Diana, I think you need to come. You will have possibility to do different roles and different ballet. What you cannot maybe do in the moment in St. Petersburg. But by me, I can give you the chance. You can try this ballet and Swan Lake and Giselle and Bayadera and Sleeping Beauty and everything, everything, everything. Also modern and also neoclassic. Also she did Balanchine. Uh, she did uh, Bejar, she did La Peri, she did Manon, everything, you know, and Diana tried here. Then, you know, she already mentally prepared because, you know, the vision, uh, the mentality, Russian mentality and Western mentality is completely different. Of course, they have a stereotype of the people, you know, this is person that fit perfectly 
for Swan Lake. And this is person fit perfectly for Sleeping Beauty. But if she fit for Sleeping Beauty, she doesn't fit for Swan Lake, you know? But here, of course, I also do, I also see the same, yeah? But actually I'm more flexible to give the chance, but there she will not get the chance, you know? That's why I give her everything here to try, you know? Because she is beautiful, she already known from the world and then, you know, she came here many, many times. That's why uh, I said, try, you will not lose anything. I'm sure it will be everything beautiful, yeah? And then already when you prepare, you can go and say, you know, can you look at me? Maybe it's time for me also to do this role in, in the Mariinsky theater. You know, I give, right. I open some doors from different uh, way for the, for the some dancer. Uh, you give back to everyone, including uh, your home country and a uh, Kiev, like you have uh, some like collaboration with uh, Kiev State Bada College, Nabuhiro Aterada. You yes. staged like a performance for them, like for the first time for the students. Uh, and like I watched a copedia when you were huh? uh, dancing in Kiev as well. So can you like tell us about that cooperation? With the you school? know, my friendship uh, to Nabuhiro is going through also my colleague. It's Amy Hariyama. She introduced us together. But actually, you know, when I, I met Nobuhiro Terada, he, he said to me that we know each other for a long time. When he was very small, he was sitting in the Shinkansen in the train beside me. But actually, he was uh, maybe five or ten years old. But I didn't, of course, I didn't remember. He said, I was sitting beside you in the, some train. And I, but for a long time, you know, I don't remember, you know, I was sitting with many, <laughs> many children were sitting beside me. And then he said, oh, Vladimir, maybe you can help, uh, maybe you can. I said, sure, of course, this is no problem for me. And uh, um, the first, what I did, I did, this is four seasons from uh, Masking Ball. The choreography, uh, what I did, the full length ballet in Vienna Staatsoper. And then I took the part, it's like a divertissement, four seasons, yeah. I, I, we perform, I also perform here in, this, uh, in Berlin, I also perform this is in Japan. And then uh, I decide that maybe it will be good for the school. This is the four seasons, yeah. The second uh, other year, what I did, I did um, Paquita, Grandpa from Paquita, yeah. And then the third year, I did uh, this uh, just garden from La Perie. And then mm -hmm. we have, uh, we talk and we decide to make the full length ballet for the school. Yeah, we do a uh, Coppelia. I should, sure, you know. And actually it was a good uh, things for me because actually from this is four production, four, four, yeah, four productions. Uh, in the first production, I was in stage, you know, because I wasn't not on stage for long, long, long time. That's why for me to be back and also in the uh, comical roles, it's also for me, it's interesting because it's also for me a challenge and motivation and inspiration, you know. I have lots of fun with the, all the students and, you know, all the time they must also react how I, I play, how I do because I always time discover some new nuances. That's why uh, not all the time exactly the same, like A, B, C, D, yeah? Sometimes I do A and then suddenly C. And then of course they must react. It's also for them, it's a challenge to react of the person with whom, that's why uh, they must learn also how to, to work, okay? That's why I was doing this is the uh, Dr. Coppelius and I have all the time, I dance with many, many, many people. And actually I was very happy that we did this is very interesting production together <clears throat> and it's live with the orchestra. And I think the children has lots of fun. And I like, I also have lots of fun. And also this is the second scene you can see, I sweat like a pig all the time because you know, you play. <laughs> You, you you do lots of jokes and you lose lots of energy yeah that's why it's fun 
uh, and uh, you are the uh, like head of the jury for the ballet festival called a Grand Prix Kiev. Yes, yes, I am a president of jury. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, this time, this is the first time when because of this is the epidemic things of the Corona. This is the first time we do this is online competition. You know, now because, uh, you know, everything upside down, all the world, ballet world, now it's in upside down because uh, lots of uh, my uh, work has been canceled or postponed. You know, uh, I, that's why I try to uh, teach also Instagram lessons. You know, everybody can follow me and you can see the different things on Instagram. You know, I always put lots of very interesting videos. I always put some new posts, yeah, with the, some uh, new interesting things. And also every day you can see that you can, you can also join me to do the lessons on Instagram. Yeah. Um, I, but I hope this situation will finish soon because, you know, for the young generation, for the young children, it's not possible always to have this as online, work online and to be uh, at home and to, to work, you know. For them, it's very important to see what is going. And also for the professional dancer, it's also it's very important to be on stage, to, to have motivation and inspiration from from but in germany actually for the moment it's not possible because of the situation but you know in russia and st petersburg everything is open yeah that's why uh, but i don't know what the situation it's going up and down up and down and uh, i hope this is the, the horrible things will finish soon and we will have normal life uh, yeah way we can have lots of uh, beautiful art things like exhibition and opera performances and museum and different exhibition yeah i wish that this is epidemic will finish forever uh, i hope so uh, yeah. your uh, instagram classes i mean you were student of very like old old school strict teachers and now you are teaching to very young generations uh all over the world. I mean, how do you stay like relevant and how do you like uh, from Instagram? I see that you have a lot of uh, students like watching your uh, class live and like so many comments. Uh, it's, it's amazing that you are like connected to the younger generation. What is your actually, secret? Actually, it was happening that, uh, you know, my niece, she decided uh, to do this. Because uh, uh, they say uh, they said you know because I was not I don't have Facebook I don't have a Twitter I don't have a you know this is the different media but you know uh, they said she said to me you must do something the people must see that you're still alive you know everybody knows that you're still alive and you do things but they must see that what is going on with you of course last year. <clears throat> We opened the account, and then uh, with this is epidemic, you know, with this is Corona situation, uh, I start to teach online lessons. Of course, in my apartment here, I didn't. It's not a big studio, yeah, but uh, lots of people. It's uh, very happy that you know, and this is difficult situation. They can have a, a very interesting lesson and combination, and to you know, also give them hope you know not to bring themselves down also i give them uh, energy i give them motivation i give them all my thoughts you know with the feeling that i doing this is together with them you know and uh, it's continuing continuing start and you know sometimes when i'm not doing they go oh why are you not doing so oh uh, the classes i said yeah but i did now four months in a row classes I need to go somewhere else, you know, have the, get the day to go. No, we miss your classes. But now, because I don't have so much work, I don't have next, uh, my trip, it will be to St. Petersburg, you know. And now, for, for the moment, when I'm not working somewhere, of course, I always teach for you. For me, it's no problem. For me, it's also wonderful to be with you. Of course, I don't see you. I just feel your breathing. Of course, it's not the same from the 
the screen, yeah. But I feel that, you know, everybody is happy, everybody send the hearts, you know, everybody send the different yeah, hearts, like, you know, I already learned how to do the heart. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's good for me, actually, you know, because like this, I was been uh, depressed. I've been depressed when I finished uh, in 2014. My international, you know, career, it's a, uh, artistic director, intendant. And then I was being down. And then the, some people said, Vladimir, you have so much contacts, you know, call, do, you know. You, you. That's why I said, okay. And then I started becoming alive. It's exactly the same now, you know. <clears throat> it's better not to stay in, and watch TV, but actually, yeah, I never watch TV. TV is always background for me. I don't like to stay in the silence apartment. If some background, like somebody talks, I don't pay attention. I do my things, I cook, I clean, or I do different uh, work uh, by computer, you know, and always something talking, you know, or music is playing. That's why, uh, you know, and also for me, it's a motivation. That's why, you know, I always uh, have this, this feeling, you know, all the time I create a different combination. Of course, I have different ideas, you know. I have, a, you know, one line, you know, how I start. Mm -hmm. Different. <clears throat> Monday, Monday is normal class. Tuesday is a little bit combination for the brain. Wednesday is normal class and tomorrow is Thursday. Tomorrow it's always Thursday. It's hard class. People know <laughs> that's killer and they must prepare mentally and physically for everything. Actually, because I'm doing also together with them. Do you think it's easy for me? No, of course, I'm 53 years old. Yeah, and, um, but you know, I never say, told them, you know, oh, it's hard, so I give. No, of course I continue. Even as hard, I squeeze myself and I'm doing. That's why it's also, it's a challenge for me. <laughs> yeah. You need to have like this, like positive energy, like from you. I mean, uh, even though I'm not dancing, like when I watch your Instagram class, like I get inspired, like as well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can we uh, like move to another like recent project in Slovakia with Andri Schott about mm -hmm. Nureyev? Can you briefly mention about that project? Oh, this is very interesting story. Because this is project supposed to be happened last year and the premiere supposed to be end of April, beginning of May. Then they postponed because of this corona, everything has been closed. Yeah. And they postponed this is for October. Then I come there. Thanks God, this is the wonderful day. It's also a friend of my uh, Andrei Sukhanov, who is also um ukrainian and he studied uh, before in kiev and then he left <clears throat> and now he's the direct uh, director uh in the, in Kosice in slovakia and i have also long term relationship and friendship to this company and to andrei suhanov and to andrei Shot. you know this is the long story but we will continue we will go to the nuri of course, uh, then on the 30th of August, I arrived there and I study the new choreography and new challenge for me. Actually, it's not a ballet, it's, a, it's more theater piece, yeah? That you can act, that's uh, different uh, duets, pas de quatre, pas de deux, pas de trois, you know, solo pieces, some different images, you know, different imagination, different thoughts of the uh, light and dark actually it's a line come from the thoughts from uh, brain you know because i'm doing the old nuriv there's also young nuriv baby and that's also the middle and but everything come through my head you know you can see the double line and you know i try to come in a different situation with the young fontaine with the old fontaine with the young uh, Eric Brun, with the old Eric Brun, you know, and the death always beside me. Yeah, of course, everything you see, this is the uh, the movement and the feeling because you know uh, it's more uh, 
um, how you say, uh, it's, it's more philosophically, you know, it's a uh, very uh, strong uh, thoughts about this piece for me. Because sometimes even the, during this, this scene, what you see, this with the mother, when he see him, when he already was sick, you know, I have a tears and, you know, I was crying because uh, that's no choreography, but the feeling of the music and how it's, everything is uh, made, you know, it's also, you build so your energy that in the end you are already dying like the, the character of this role, yeah. Of course, I've been invited uh, to do, because the premiere, they plan on October. Then, of course, they postponed for November. Then I left, then they said, oh, of course, you can come back after the new year. It will be premiere in February. Then they postpone this is again, they cancel everything because of the corona situation. And you know, the red zone, green zone, many people sick, not many people sick. You do this test, you don't do tests. You know, some people sick in the company, some people catch infection. Okay, it's up and down, up and down, like everywhere in the world. In the end, they film this, you know, and uh, fourth, third and fourth of uh, March this year, they film completely whole performance. And I hope soon they will show completely or they will cut and so they will edit and then they will show everything online, this performance. But I hope I will dance this is live also because I want also to be on stage. I want that the public, you know, I want to feel the public breathing, not only screen becoming wet, you know, and uh, but I also want to feel this because the <clears throat> exchange, you know, energy exchange, my um, energy, what I give to the people, the energy must come back. You know, this exchange, this is the most important mm -hmm. for me. Not only give, you know, I need to also receive something back. Because if you always give, 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 and nothing come back, then you will empty yourself, then you will like this. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, coming back to your classes and your interaction with the younger aspiring uh, dancers, what advice like would you like to give to them? You know, they... <clears throat> Actually, they must enjoy, you know, they must enjoy, like uh, people enjoying, you know, I, to be with me, and I think it's, uh, I enjoy to be with the people, and please join me, you know, you will not lose anything, first of all, you do it for yourself, I don't see you, you just see me, you will see yourself, and you will see me, yeah? I will not see what you do, how, how old you, if you are 18 years old or you are 20 years old or you are 30 or you are 50. But if you like, if you have a, this challenge, you know, to be, you can, you can join me all the time, you know? Every day at one o'clock, uh, Berlin time, it's, uh, yeah, it's two o'clock uh, uh, Turkey or Russia, and you can you can count the different time and around the world in the clock, and then you can join me anytime. You know, I'm live. You know, I do bar, little bit center, one jump, and then we do port de bras. And I wish everybody a wonderful day, and please take care of yourself. That's it. Mm -hmm. All my love. <laughs> so everybody, like, don't forget to follow. Vladimir Malahov's Instagram account. The classes yeah. are there. And like to conclude, would yes, you. Uh, would you like to uh, give us like about uh, insights about tomorrow? Like what is next? Like what are you going to do? You know, like uh, you know, the plants always coming and going you know it's very difficult now in this moment to do some plans because you know because of the situation what we now what we are now in this situation you know of course i have a plans to uh, to do different choreography and to go there but you know now we plan but then 
two weeks later, three weeks later, everything is canceled or postponed. That's why <coughs> to say what is will be next, yeah. So, you know, I'm talking to, to do the Cinderella, I'm talking to do the Paquita, I'm talking to do Bayader, I'm the, I, I teaching the lesson, I teaching going to the uh, for the um, um, to, to, to the school, but you plan and then they said, oh, sorry, you know, because they, they postponed the lockdown or they postponed the, you're not allowed to enter this country. That's why to say what is the plan, I have lots of plans. And of course, I would like to share with you. But, you know, if it's not clear, if it's not, uh, you know, happening, you know, I will say then it's uh, when I need to say, oh, sorry, it's already canceled a long time ago. No, that's why I have lots of plans. But now join me on Instagram classes. And this is, will be 300% that I'm doing this is with you. You will enjoy more than I will tell about my plans where I will go. Uh, that sounds amazing. So uh, I think like we can uh, take uh, take up on that. Uh, so when you have like more plans, maybe we can have another talk uh, sometime sure. in the future. Yeah. <laughs> so Anytime. that was uh, a great pleasure to have you this evening. I mean, to witness your amazing uh, journey and career. And you are still, uh, I think, producing and giving back, back to the world. We are like so lucky to have you. Uh, thank, thank you very you much. So much. I even didn't know that, you know, it's like we start, you know, we can continue, continue, continue more. Yeah, but already like a one, I look in the lifetime, it's look one an hour and one and a half hour, it's passed like a peanuts, you know? Exactly. It's so fast, uh, you know, I even didn't realize. <laughs> the time is passing because when you are motivated when you expire and you know and when you talk with such interesting person like you who is uh, you know have this is the very interesting um, connection yeah. you know that's why you open even more yourself in the front of everybody that's why yeah, thank, thank you very you much. much well this is wonderful wonderful channel that uh, and also for the invitation and I hope you enjoy my small life story. Of course, we didn't take other different suspect, yeah. And uh, but maybe next time will be the part number two, what we can talk about something else. Because yeah, besides, definitely. Because, because beside uh, my professional life, I also have uh, other things to do. Because I like cooking, I like garden, mm. animals, I like. Uh, uh, paintings, I like books, and uh, I like to sew in, you know, I, I have... When I see your, uh, uh, like, Instagram video and also, like, background, I think you have a lot of paintings. Yes. Like, you would like to, you would like to see that maybe sometime in yes. the future as well. Uh, I thank you so much for this beautiful evening. And we are sending you love and, like, all of our, like, audience. Everybody. Maybe, oh, red, red heart? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> like, I am not very good at this. A uh, good night. Yeah, and please, 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 everybody, please take care of yourself. Yeah, and looking forward for the next time. Thank you so much for this wonderful, wonderful time. Stay healthy, everyone, and goodbye. Bye-bye.